hello guys you're welcome back to our channel the cool x educational media in this class we are going to be showing you the practical solution to the 2022 yx physics practical for electricity and in this question we are giving a potentiometer a cell about three volts an ammeter here a key a jockey and a standard resistor of about 2 ohms now this setup is meant to be arranged in series with the ammeter first then the cell we have here then we have the key next to it and then the 2 ohm resistor and finally the jockey so you can see that all wires has been connected and then having connected all the wires I also arranged it in order so that once it's time for connection, it will be seamless. So what is the first instruction? You've seen the diagram already and the first instruction is that we should measure the EMF of the battery. To get the EMF of the battery, although this is a fresh battery that has not been used, we still need to measure it to determine the EMF of, that, of this battery. To achieve that, I'm going to be bringing in another component which wasn't part of the makeup, which we refer to as the voltmeter. So with this, I can connect the cell to the terminals of the voltmeter and then determine the EMF. So simply, I'll connect it in this order. You can see here, so what is the reading of the voltmeter? That is upon about 3.2, as you can see. So you can see we have the battery set, we have this, the key connected to the resistor and then we have the resistor connected to the jockey. Now we, you can see the key is locked. So we will test for continuity. By testing for continuity we will find out whether our ammeter is deflecting so you see it here here is the ammeter you can see that current is flowing in and that is why you can see the pointer the ammeter pointer there deflecting as you can see so it means that there is continuity so having done that we are going to continue so what is the next step so now that we have confirmed our continuity just tap anywhere you can see that the current is flowing through can see so we're going to start the experiment proper what do we want to get we want to deduce the current that will flow in the ammeter when the length of the potentiometer wire is from 30 and then 40 50 60 and 70 so with that we can be able to deduce the inverse of the current and then plot the graph and make the deductions from the graph so what do we intend to do we want to find the ammeter reading when the potentiometer wire is 30 cm. So here is the zero end of the potentiometer wire and here is the 30 cm mark of the potentiometer wire. So I will tap the potentiometer at point 30 as you have seen here. So the reading here on the ammeter is 0 0.6 as you can see here, 0 0.6 here, steady. Now I'm going to go back and tap the potentiometer wire at 0.40 as you can see here here is the 40 cm mark and then what is the ammeter reading the ammeter reading is 0 0.55 as you can see just in between 5 and 6 then i'm going to tap the potentiometer wire at 0.50 here is 0.50 exactly at 0.50 what is the reading on the ammeter you can see that the ammeter reading is at 0 0.5 0 0.5 then I'll go over again and tap the potentiometer wire at 0.60. Here is 0.60 on the potentiometer wire. Now, if you check the ammeter, you will see that the reading is at 0.45. You can see between 4 and 5, avoiding parallax error. And then finally, I'm going to be tapping the potentiometer wire at 0.70. Here is 0.70. So once I've tapped this, we'll check the current reading. The current reading is exactly at 0 0.4 you can see at exactly 0 0.4 so
so you can see that the trend is seamless very straightforward so the trend is that once the distance of the potentiometer wire or the length of the potentiometer wire is increased that the current will be reducing so i'm going to tabulate this result find the inverse of the current and then plot a graph of the length of the potentiometer wire which is the distance d against the inverse of the current once i do that then i would interpret the graph and then we answer the short answer questions that follow hey, stay tuned so having compiled our table this is what it looks like you can see the emf value of the cell is written on top of the table as 3.2 volt which was what we got from the voltmeter and then our values of d i and inverse of i which is a requirement from the question has been compiled as you can see them on the table recall that during the conduct of this experiment that we had our d constant at 30 40 50 60 and 70 these were the length of the potentiometer wire where the jockey was tapped and you know that from that experiment we confirmed that as the length of the wire is increased that the current flowing into the um, ammeter would be reducing so the values of the current also that we got in the experiment had also been compiled here as you can see 0 0.6 0 0.55 0 0.5 4 5 and 4 as you can see them in that order and then the inverse of these values are also written in the correct decimal place now with this particular result we are expected to plot a graph of d against i inverse so to plot a graph of d against i inverse our result is straightforward as you can see here is our graph you can see that we have a positive graph a straight line graph making an intercept with the horizontal axis so so with this graph as you can see here we are expected to deduce the slope of the graph being a graph of d against i inverse the slope will be simply the change in the d over the change in the i inverse and then from what we traced here we have 60 minus 10 over 2.22 minus 1.2 getting that calculated would give us 49.02 amp cm Please don't forget to insert your unit for the slope, otherwise you would have to lose marks in doing that. Now also, from the graph, we are asked to find the value of i when d is equal to zero. Remember, we plotted a graph of i inverse. For this question, they said from the graph, we should find the value of i when d is equal to zero. That will give us i naught because d is equal to zero. That means we're going to get i naught. So from the graph, if you look at the graph, the value of I inverse when D is equal to zero is actually one. If you check the graph or maybe if you sketch your own graph, you can get your own value using your different scale. Now, but for us here, our value is one. Now, if the value is one, it means that we have to find the inverse of this value to get the I because what we plotted was I inverse. So for whatever value you're going to get, maybe gives you 0 0.95 or whatever, you are going to find the inverse of that value to get the correct value of i. So our own is straightforward. Inverse of 1 will also give us 1. So the implication of that is that the value of i when d is equal to 0 is 1. Secondly, or thirdly now, we are also asked to find the ratio of the EMF to the slope. Remember that earlier on, our EMF value is 3.2 and our slope as calculated here is 49.02. So the ratio of the EMF to the slope gave us 0 0.065 ohm cm. Recall that ohm there is resistance, which is equal to V over I, that's the, the, the potential difference over the current. If you substitute the correct if you substitute the correct unit there, you will see that they would convert to give us ohm. So don't be confused about the ohm cm. Voltage over current there gives us the resistance, which is measured in ohms. Now, as we begin to wrap up, what are the basic precautions we took 
um, in the conduct of this experiment. Recall that it is um, an electricity experiment, so the precautions are straightforward. If for every connection you do, you must have to ensure that the connections were tight. So I stated here that I ensured tight connection. And then also, based on the fact that we use the potentiometer with a calibrated meter roll on it, so I'd have to avoid parallax error in reading the potentiometer, and of course the ammeter as well. And then in use of the ammeter, I avoided zero error in reading it. So all these are precautions. Of course, there can be others that you can have, uh, other precautions that you can take during the experiment to ensure accurate result. For the other two short answer questions, we have here number one: What are the factors that the resistance of a resistor depends on? So there are some few factors that the resistance of a resistor depends on. And then at the end of the day, we are asked to derive the equation connecting all of these to show the equation connecting all of these factors. First of all, the resistance of a resistor depends on one, the length of the, the, the wire, the length of the wire. Re recall that the length of a wire is directly proportional to the resistance. And then number two, we have the cross-sectional area meaning that the area is inversely proportional to the resistance. So, thirdly, we have the temperature. The resistance is directly proportional to the temperature. And finally, the nature of the material in question, which we also refer to as the resistivity of that particular material, is also a factor that depends on the resistance. Now, I can give you a code to remember it. I can call it LANT, L-A-N-T. Right, just for reference purposes, L represents length, A represents area, N represents nature of material, and T represents the temperature. The equation connecting all of these together is that the resistance R is equal to the resistivity times the length all over the area. Use the relations that I put, you can put everything together, right? I already put that R is directly proportional to L, R is inversely proportional to the area, R is directly proportional to temperature, and R is directly proportional to the resistivity. If you put all this together, that will give you R is equal to PL over A at constant temperature. Then finally, in the question also, if you check that question, we're asked to do some few calculations. We're asked um, to calculate the cost of using a fan for 10 hours if the utility rate is $0.5 per kilowatt hour, if that electric fan draws a current of 0.75 amp in a 240 volt circuit. Now, this question is also pretty much straightforward. If you check the breakdown here, you will see that the current value is given as 0.75 amperes and the potential difference is equal to 240 volts then with these two values we can actually get the power power is equal to current times the voltage so since we have the current and we have the voltage p is equal to iv multiplying both that will give us 0 0.7 times 240 will give us 180 watts but because it, electricity is charged in kilowatt hour so it means that we have to first change this watts to kilowatt so power is equal to 180 watts which is equivalent to 0 0.18 kilowatts so what would now be the energy consumed since we know that energy consumed is power times time so the energy consumed in 10 hours meaning that the time is 10 hours will be the power which is 0 0.18 kilowatts times 10 hours so the energy consumed will be equal to 1.8 kilowatt hour so the cost that will be paid for running or for consuming this uh, uh, value of energy will be equal to, since the charges are $0.5 per kilowatt hour, the cost of energy will now be 1.8 kilowatt hour times 0 0.5, which will give us a total of $0.9. So this is the amount that is going to be spent for running that particular appliance for 10 hours. So here is the question that was asked in this particular experiment. There is one more to come. I like that you go through it again and stay tuned for the solution of the other questions following. We appreciate your time. Thank you and God bless you.